Good evening everyone, this is Nikki, and today we're playing some Assassin's Creed 3 Deathmatch on the map Animus Core. The lovely blonde lady in the middle left is the Pioneer, and let's get this thing started. Your objective is to find and kill assigned targets. Avoid being killed by other players. Now, right off the bat, we're going to notice some trademark Ubisoft shenanigans. I'm going in for first blood right now, which is really important to help me towards my variety, but this happens. That's really strange. And since Assassin's Creed 3 has some changed controls from Revelations and Brotherhood, I identify that guy as my pursuer, push circle as I run past him, and little did I remember that square is actually the universal interact with other players button now, so use it to kill and stun people. Since I mashed circle running past that guy, I didn't get the stun on him, so it looked like I didn't even know he was my pursuer, and I just run straight past him. Don't even get my honorable death right there, so that sucks. Anyway. This isn't going to be a first impressions on Assassin's Creed 3 video because, frankly, I haven't had enough time on it yet, even though I spent all day playing it. Get aerialed. I love that animation with the... It's just the gun going into people's face. It's just so satisfying. This character, the Pioneer, has some really, really satisfying kill animations. I'll point one out coming up in the future. Stun! And, yeah, I've been playing this game all day, and I was supposed to play a ton of multiplayer, but I ended up playing Wolfpack trying to beat it by myself because all my friends were at school didn't have really anyone to play with. Played some Wolfpack solo, that's how I got so high level because Wolfpack also contributes to your multiplayer abilities. This is a knife mute right here. I also played a ton of single player. Now I sat down with the single player, I'm like, alright, I'm going to play one sequence, I'm going to get into multiplayer, record a game, and then put it up on YouTube. That didn't happen, I didn't have time to play too many games, I don't even think I played a dozen. So I had a really small sample of gameplay to put up, and I wasn't even going to put this one up until I realized it was the best score I had and I'm really really hard on myself when it comes to putting up gameplays because I want the absolute best to go out but I didn't have too much time in one day to do my absolute best I don't quite know the game yet and I'm a little shaky on controls here and there but it turns out that this game I'm playing right now despite the fact that I was crying at the end of it because it's just so close off a of 10k I was I was really disappointed in myself spoiler alert but this is actually the 19th highest Assassin's Creed Deathmatch game on YouTube right now, or on the leaderboards. It said at the time I was checking, I'll put it up on the screen. So that's kind of like my little claim to fame right there. It's kind of cool that I got a 19th place on the leaderboards, despite the fact this game's been out for 10 hours on the Pacific Coast, on the West Coast of the U.S. I just feel still kind of cool about doing that, I don't know. But I wasn't going to put up this gameplay until I was screwing around with the leaderboards and I finally saw that. So I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, let's talk about our ability sets today. We're using Disguise, and Disguise is kind of the same as it was back in Revelations. Although, what I notice now is it takes a little bit longer to put on and take off than it did back in Revelations. I'm not sure if that's just a first person thing, or if everyone can see it, but I notice whenever I'm putting on a Disguise, it takes a little longer than usual than it would in Revelations. And you'll know what I'm saying if you used Disguise before. But I'm also running Joe the Bodyguard, if you watched my previous Revelations videos. Joe is my bodyguard, and he protects me from people sometimes. Now, Joe has a few different mechanics this time around. He goes after people you have locked, and overall, though, I played with him for a little bit. He's still kind of useless, but, you know, he's my friend Joe. Not going to talk too much smack about him. And finally, if you didn't already know, Assassin's Creed 3 comes with three abilities. The third ability is going to be mapped to your triangle or Y button on Xbox and that is always a ranged ability. Now there are four of them. I think the most helpful one's going to be throwing knives in my opinion because not only do they slow down people but you can knife mute people. Now that guy right there didn't knife mute me correctly. If you don't know what that is, if you get hit by a throwing knife then your kill slash stun distance is temporarily reduced and overall that just makes throwing knives a lot more versatile. Not only can it slow down roofers, knock people off walls, but you can also defend yourself using them. And knife muting is significantly easier in this game than it was back in Revelations. Right there I killed a civilian because I locked on the wrong person. Lock system still has a little bit of work, or maybe that was my bad aim, I don't know. But also, when you kill a civilian in Assassin's Creed 3, you don't lose your contract. It's just temporarily suspended. And by the way, here's some more Ubisoft shenanigans. Deathmatch still doesn't quite have its spawn system down, but you have to understand that the maps are smaller, so spawn systems are still going to be a little weird. By the way, this map is the Animus Core, and if it looks a little weird to you, that's because it is a little weird. This is a map that wasn't fully built, and by not fully built, I don't mean that the developers got lazy in making it. I'm saying in the middle of the map, if you were playing a game mode like Wanted and stuff, 
then it would look pretty normal. But if you come to the outside parts of the map, which is where Deathmatch is, because Deathmatch is a smaller portion of the map, then the Animus didn't quite load the entire map on purpose. So it looks kind of cool. It has this futuristic -y first civilization sort of look to it, which I think is pretty cool. By the way, this is also the first time I ever played on this map, so I don't quite know my way around it. Anyway, let's talk about the rest of my set because I just finished talking about abilities. Let's go into perks. There are two perks I'm using like normal. They didn't add a third perk. I'm using Sixth Sense and Resistance. Now, Resistance does the same thing it did back in Revelations, except it's a little more helpful because, number one, it's like one of the only perks I have unlocked at this time that's even mildly helpful. But when you get a contested kill, the time you spend dazed after getting slapped in the face a little bit is less. So contested kills affect you a little less and you're also stunned for a shorter amount of time. I'm probably going to switch it out when I get blender or kill buffer or some other more helpful perk. But sixth sense is a completely new perk, haven't ever seen it before and pretty much it reduces the time you need to escape from people and you're like well Nikki you're an idiot because there are no escapes in deathmatch. It also reveals pursuers who are running around like idiots behind you so you don't have to keep circling your camera around like right here you can see this red triangle on screen even if I'm not looking at my pursuers direction if they just so happen to be running around anywhere near me in my line of sight then my little compass even though it's not there will still tell me that they're there sixth sense is pretty helpful I'm gonna use it for a little bit unless I find another perk that's even better but I see it has a little bit of potential maybe even to be used competitively and as far as kill streaks and loss streaks go I'm going for silent 250 and boost cooldowns both of which are pretty much exactly the same as it was in revelations and let me take a pause for a second to show you this really badass kill animation Oh, that's why I love the Pioneer. That is pretty awesome. A lot of the running or high profile kill animations in this game have been really incredible. That guy doesn't know how to knife mute and I really like what they did. Even though they're reusing a few of them, I don't really mind because there are a lot of them, especially the environmental kill animations where if someone's leaning up against a wall, you go up to them and smash their face into it. But as a whole, I think all the new kill animations are pretty awesome. Anyway, I also like the Lady Maverick. She was gonna be my main character, but it seems everyone's trying to pick her. And if you're a longtime follower of Stealth Shampoo, you know that if you steal my persona, I'm going to hurt you in the face repeatedly, like that. That's what you get for stealing my Lady Maverick. But I think her and the Pioneer are going to be my two absolute favorites because the Lady Maverick actually has the costume of the courtesan back from Revelations. And they don't have any returning characters, unfortunately. I really wanted to see the courtesan in a third game in a row. But, you know, she wouldn't make sense because she's kind of from Constantinople and everything and Rome and that area. How'd she get over the ocean? But I wouldn't mind. I would like to see the courtesan back. Sir, don't run at me. And I see the Lady Maverick over there in the background. I think she's my pursuer, but apparently not. So I just end up stabbing a random civilian. There's Mr. Monopoly Man. That's just what I'm going to call him until I finally figure out what he is. Yep, looks like he's coming after me. This is how you do a proper knife mute right here. I wait for the throwing knives to wear off on me, and then I go in because my throwing knives hit second. Take advantage of the fact that he's still suffering from the effects of the throwing knives, and I go in and get a good stun. And I'm saying this because a lot of people did failed throwing knife mutes on me today and it's because if you try to run in you're gonna get in their kill range as you try to stun even though the kill range is shortened it's not shortened that much so if you run you're gonna get into the range and the point is to stay out but it's just close enough for you to still be able to land the stun look at that ubi shenanigans once again and let's go ahead and respawn anyway let's talk about some overall thoughts i have on ac3 because i know a lot of you guys are coming here for my opinion but I don't believe in first impression videos because they're just a bunch of BS. You can't judge a game in its entirety in a day, especially if Ubisoft keeps their word and actually patches this game and does a lot of rebalancing. I don't want to judge it in just a day and it would be really inaccurate and stupid of me if I were to do a first impressions video because despite the fact that I've been playing this all day, I haven't experienced it enough to actually form a good opinion. So anyway, and no one has, by the way, I'm not just saying me. Let's talk about the single player for a second, and don't worry, there will be no spoilers, but I've gone pretty far into the single player because I sat down like, all right, I'm gonna play one sequence, like I said earlier, but it didn't happen, I played a lot of it. Single player is looking really solid. I'm not gonna put in any spoilers, so other than that, it's solid, that's all I'm gonna say for now. Wolfpack is what I've been mainly playing, and that is actually a really easy game mode if you're a veteran assassin because knowing how to maximize your points, get good kills and stuff, not too hard to do. I wish I could have played Wolfpack with four people, which I didn't, but I will talk about that some other time. Multiplayer so far, I am not seeing any game-breaking, incredibly terrible, offensive smoke bomb status, game-breaking elements 
none of that yet. I'm not too sure if any of them will actually arise because I did spend a fair amount of time looking at the abilities list and stuff like that and I'm not seeing anything that could be considered too crazy and I didn't have any abilities ready right there. Unfortunately, I'm going to take an honorable death and this is where it really gets down to the wire. This is where I really start to lose my mind. Oh look, a 100 point kill. Once again, when was the last time we saw one of those? It's getting really down to the wire right now, and I'm at 9,700 points. We have 15 seconds left, and Mr. Monopoly Man's got to be somewhere around here. And the ending of this video is why I cried after I played this game and didn't want to put it up. I'm hastily looking for Mr. Monopoly Man, running to my pursuer in disguise. He still knew it was me because I was running around like an idiot. And that's why I don't like knowing what my score is. I kind of don't like having my score in the top left right there because I went all crazy, didn't keep my head straight. Couldn't score a 10k on my first try, and that's really sad. Anyway, that's the game. I finished first place, not bad. If you guys want to subscribe to Stell Shampoo, I'm going to be posting way more AC3 in the future. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash Stell Shampoo. Link's going to be in the description. I like these new animations, by the way. They're very, uh, make me feel like a badass. Anyway, if you guys want to let me know what game mode you want me to cover next, if you want me to go over some certain abilities, use them in a match, and do well with them, then I will try to do that. Just leave a comment down below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching, too. My older videos on the screen, and I will see you all some other time.